This video is sponsored by True Gold Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today, April 19th, 2024. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, NOAA is claiming we're in a G3 strong geomagnetic storm, and I'm not seeing that on any of the satellite data. I'd like to go over this. First off, why does it matter? Low levels, manageable effects possible to power grid, satellite ops, and GPS. Aurora moves further towards the equator over New York to North Iowa to Washington State if at night. Warning. Active until the 19th at 2359. That's going to be 659 Central Time this evening. Responses may vary widely during a geomagnetic storm with periods of escalation or weakening. Monitor Space Weather Prediction Center alerts for the latest levels. Now, I don't think we've seen this level. Not even close at least per our satellite information that we're being given. G3 strong geomagnetic storm in progress. This was printed at 20 UTC time. So it came out about 102 central time here in the U.S. G3 strong geomagnetic storm levels were reached at approximately 1951, which is going to be about 1 o'clock. Central here in the U.S., remember that, 1951. Strong or higher geomagnetic storm levels are expected to continue for the remainder of the 19th of April. Now, these are our KP indexes that tell us how the actual solar storm is affecting Earth. When we look, we see that the estimated planetary index is still at a G1 during that time period that they claim it was in a G3. Now we do see a G3 down here on the college index, but this is not something they regularly would reference. We're seeing nine hours of a geomagnetic storm up on the Boulder index, three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, no geomagnetic storm on the Fredericksburg index, just disturbances for nine hours. And again, six hours here, of late of a G1 geomagnetic storm that covers that one o'clock time period that was claimed to be a G3. Now, so does this on the college index, but let's take a look at the actual data, shall we? All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to 1900 UTC. That's going to be right about here. And we have plasma at 8.85. Uh, any of this time, <laughs> plasma goes from 10 down to 7.71. Solar winds are below 500 kilometers per second. Temperature is absolutely normal. Uh, I don't see anything that looks like a G3 geomagnetic storm. You would have to go back to around 8 UTC time, which would be 1 o'clock last night not one o'clock this afternoon and we did have some plasma inbound but it still was not that serious again this is our discovery satellite real-time solar winds we see no plasma around the time period they're speaking of 1900 utc time uh, and we see very little solar winds as well nothing over even 500 kilometers per second and the temperature is absolutely normal so it's very hard to determine what they're talking about. Yes, I do see these try to come together here, but uh, I don't see that the plasma is strong around 1900 or even currently. It's below space weather threshold levels of 10 centimeters cubed. Regularly, we would see 25, 35 
maybe 45 centimeters cubed or higher before we reached a G3 geomagnetic storm. And we can say the same with solar winds here at 471, not even over 500 kilometers per second. And they say we're in a G3 geomagnetic storm. I am so confused. All right, checking our work as usual. This is probably the solar wind pushed at Earth by the CME that impacted at 5 UTC time, about 10 p.m. last night. And you can see that it did go up to about 30 centimeters cubed, slightly higher than that earlier. But it's been residing ever since then. And currently we're down below space where the threshold of 10 centimeters cubed we're not even to 10 centimeters cubed here. And they're telling us that we're in a geomagnetic storm. That's 1800 UTC time. That's you know, 1900 UTC time. This makes no sense. We look, of course, I believe that that is the wind that was pushed by the CME towards Earth right before the impact. Why is the solar wind moving up this much? I don't know, but it's still not even over 500 kilometers per second, which tells me there's nothing here to indicate any type of geomagnetic storm, not even a G1 geomagnetic storm, more or less a G3 geomagnetic storm. Now, looking back at these KP indexes, none of them cover the 19th hour. So, what can we assume here? This next bar is going to have to be huge on the estimated planetary index, it's going to have to go up to at least the 7 level here. It should be printed very soon in about 30 minutes, but there's no solar winds or plasma that would indicate such a storm was actually occurring. I do realize this college index shows a G3, but this was not during the time period that they're referring to whatsoever. This was earlier in the day. Actually, it ended at 1900 UTC time this bar ended at that and if you recall they claim that we reached these G3 levels at 1951 or about 20 UTC time which again would be on this next print but the data from our satellites do not reflect any type of solar storm more or less a G3 solar storm so I'm trying to figure this out, but I think there's been a mistake made. Let me know what you guys think in the description below. Uh, they do say that there are more CMEs inbound, and I do definitely agree with that. After yesterday's activity, that will start occurring, I guess, around the 21st. So keep your tinfoil hats on. Please share. Please subscribe. Let me know what you think about this call out of a G3 geomagnetic storm which makes no sense based on the satellite data. And please share, subscribe. Always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.